All right, here we are. We're back with the Triumph, and we're ready to start putting this uh, motor together. So right now we tentatively have the, the idler gear here, sitting in here, and we're going to go over the timing marks here because um, this is very important. So we have like dots, we have dashes, and it's all sitting a certain way. So let's go ahead and start talking about that. Okay, so this shop manual here, it talks, it just shows how we line up the dashes with dots on these cams here and then with the pinion gear down here. Um, it doesn't really go into detail on um, how it all lines up because in this other older book here it does. But anyways, it should be that noted that, uh, this is important here, that due to the, the intermediate wheel having a, a prime number of teeth, the timing marks only co coincide every 94th revolution. Thus, there is no cause for alarm if the timing marks if the timing marks will not readily realign. So what that's saying is like we start out like this now, and there'll be a long time before they line up again. Is what they're saying. So don't be alarmed at that. So on this in this book over here, it talks about the picture is different. Now it's showing the short dash and the long dash down here on this gear this gear and then two dots over here and then this dot on the pinion gear is cradled in these two dashes what it talks about in the in the writing here is the fact that this is what's missing in this book over here because it's the same picture practically except for the drawings backwards up here so that whole segment's missing right here what it says is long dash for T120 and TR6 and short dash for 6T. So we have to make sure ours for our TR6 is the dot is lined up with the long dash. This short dash, long dash. And then we have to take this dot and line up with the long dash. Now this is actually a dot, but it's it should be a dash over here so yeah anyways so stay tuned here we're gonna get this all lined up good all right so working on triumph here and we're gonna put that uh, conduit in that was all messed up in the last video so we're getting ready to install it here It looks like it is. Yeah, I can't tell if it's all the way down in there. No, I don't know the height it's supposed to be at. So, I mean, we got to, like, you know, test fit probably the cylinder and all that great stuff here. Make sure it all engages it right. High. So, stay tuned here. All right, getting close here. Oh, sounds like it's bottoming out. Yeah, it didn't take much. Now it's in there. There we go. All right, now off to some more stuff here, put this thing together. All right, so we're getting ready to put the timing stuff in here. We talked about the time, how the timing's done just a little bit ago. And we're going to put the idler gear back in, but we got to put the pinion gear in. And to do that, before we put the pinion gear in, we have to oil this bearing down here really good. I mean, it has a good oil for initial startup and stuff before it starts getting oil in the system. So we'll be doing that, and then we're going to attach the oil pump here. We have it sitting on there right now and stuff, so stay tuned. There we are. We're putting oil in the case, in the case spring right down there and kind of rotating it somewhat as we put oil in there. Oops, there we go. I can see. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we got a bunch in there now. So, there we go. The important part is that we have some in it. Yeah. 
So anyway, stay tuned here. And we're gonna make sure we prime this hole here too. That sends the oil into the crank. And then we're just gonna put a bunch in there. Call it kind of good. It'll hold quite a bit. Yeah. Because it's gonna fill up that whole trap in there, right? Yeah. So anyway, it'll hold quite a bit. That way it's not dry when we go to start it and then finally get some which could cause galling and stuff without having nice oil to begin with there we go we got the washer in there first and then now we're going to put the, the pinion gear on here Yeah, so it's kind of like an interference fit, so we got to drive it on while getting in the groove there with the, the key. So. the new nut on and pull it in the rest of the way. Uh, I'm trying to think what the torque spec for this nut is. Don't have it off hand here. So I'll look that up. It's in the first few pages right there. The torque. Oh yeah, so in the, in the manual here it talks about uh, all the different torque specs here. So we're looking for no, not in that group, huh? Well, stay tuned here. I'll look for this here. All right, so I got like three different manuals here. This is a aftermarket manual that I got from a oh, Triumph dealership. Real. But it's a real one. It's just a reprint of everything else. This is an old manual from way back. Covers everything from 1963 and on. It's a Haynes. So this is a Haynes, or Haynes uh, manual. Um, and then this one here is a Haynes manual as well, but it's a newer version here. And uh, it covers everything from 63 to 83 also. So it's pretty much written the same way. What I'm getting at is in both segments in both this book, I found the, the setting for the crank pinion nut. But this is going to be interesting because what it says here is Replaces the crankshaft pinion securing nut, which may otherwise obscure the timing mark. So we got to make sure we have it lined up so we can still see that mark on the pinion gear. This has a fully normal right hand thread and should be tightly fo fo tightened fully. <laughs> but they don't suggest or say anywhere what the, what the actual spec is for this nut. So um, I guess we're going to tighten it down to 60 to 65 foot pounds probably. And that should do it. And we're going to make sure that... One of these points does not obscure the timing mark. We'll find it. First. But we'll find it first and go from there. So, which I think we have it covered up right now. We can't see it. I can back it out. So, anyway. Yeah, stay tuned here. Uh, we'll be working on this for a little bit here. We'll put the intermediate here on first. Okay. So, stay tuned. Okay, we haven't got this in there tight yet, but we had just put the idler gear in here and we have it timed perfectly so we don't have to worry about losing it once we get this tight. But um, it'd be nice to be able to see it when we get it tight. Otherwise, we got it all timed properly. Dot to line. Dot to dot. Dot to dot. And that's what it shows here. Yeah, and it shows it in this manual. Now this is what dot to line, dot to dot. And the dot between the lines. Right, exactly. Now this uh, only happens once every 94 revolutions. So once we move it, we're not going to see it again. But we know right now that we have it set. So when we go to turn it around a couple times and it doesn't line up again, we won't be alarmed because that's what that means. We want that tight. Yeah, we're going to want it tight. So How about see. 
Really? 80? 70? Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, we Let's don't see want... see what 70 feels like. Yeah, we don't want to... Rip I don't it. think 70 is overdoing it. Okay. Let's go 70. Well, right now we have it securely <laughs> with the socket wrench and stuff. But uh, how secure is that? We don't know. But we know if we torque it down to something at a certain rate, we should be really good at keeping it tight. So we're going to go to in increments, okay. but we're going to go to 70. You might want to hold the back. Yeah, the I'm, I'm holding back. I'm going to let go of that. Okay, I'll hold back here. That's 70. All right. 70 it is. All right, well, stay tuned here. Okay, so we got this all tightened down. We went to 70 foot-pounds, and then we tightened the nuts on this. They were at 5 foot-pounds. They're kind of a bugger to do because the pump body just kind of like blocks off, you know, the flats here, and you got to be at like a weird angle and stuff. And, yeah, anyway, we got it <laughs> without damaging the nuts very much. And then, anyway, I guess what's next is we're going to be working on the timing cover here and putting in the seals and stuff. There's and two seals. Yeah, remember back when we were taking this apart, we had one of these were backwards. So, yeah, the seal, anyway. When we got to it was like this, all the way in. And it was backwards. This is backwards. Because pressure's on the inside of the case trying to blow out. So, in order for that to work that way, this part of, this, of the seal needs to be this direction. So, it, so it blows this direction. It can't blow against. Right. If you turn it the other way, when pressure goes in here, this will just open up and let it escape. So it's got to go this direction. Down here, we got pressure coming from here, and it's going across to here, pushing oil through this. And this goes over to the pressure relief or uh, pressure oil sending light, but it goes. From the, from the tank, goes through the pump, and goes into here. And then it goes, the other one goes straight across, and this is a pressure relief valve. Right. But this is actually where the oil comes from, from, from the pump. It pumps down and comes out of there. So it comes out of there, goes into here, goes into there, fills up with there, and pumps it in through the hole, fills the crankshaft, and squirts it out around the connecting rods. That's how it oils and oils the cams. Right. So in order for that to work properly, this has to go in here with the seal part facing in, or it goes in this direction. Right. The seal that has the garter in here is, yep. let's call that the back side of the seal. The back side of the seal has to be, in this case, on the back side on the inside. So, so the, when pressure builds, it can't blow past that, that, that spring. It, it just holds it. If we push it the other way, it would squirt past this angle and just open this up, and it would just squirt all around there instead of going through. Yeah, and we need it to pressurize the crank. We can't. Right. Otherwise, we're not going to have positive oil pressure. pressure. So, so, then so we have, had these this things, one the has same to go seal. This way. Yeah, it takes the same seal here and here. And then this one goes this way, yep. and this one goes this way. And, yeah, unfortunately, the people had it apart, had it both going the same way, and the one was the wrong way. So That's next. Yeah. All right, well. And we'll put this together. Stay tuned here. All right, yeah, yeah, that's the thing here we got laying here. Oh, yeah. The seal saver. Um, that threads into here. helps us keep the seal safe when we go to slide the thing on well, it keeps it from ruining the seal yeah so that makes a tapered transition so that when you when this seal is in here right and it's remember this is backwards so this lip is is pushed inward and so it doesn't want to go on but this is smaller so it'll slip right on there and it'll just slide right over yep so all it's you like do that. is oil that all up good when you have a new seal, put your gasket in here and 
pop it right on there. There we go. All right, well, stay tuned. We'll get going here on that here in a second. All right, so we're going to work on putting in uh, the seal for the points cover here. Fancy little uh, seal driver. it in. Hmm. Yeah, we could do that. You have more control this way, but... Do we? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Alright, well, stay tuned here. Yeah, well, it's not going in real easily. It's going crooked. Okay. Okay. All right, we're gonna try to press this in now. See how this works? It's been better if the seal went straight. It move? Yeah, it's in. Good. All right, well, that works. Yeah. Stay tuned here. There we go. We got it in. Um, we're going to clean up a little bit. Some of that uh, ceiling paint or paint that's on it kind of scratched off the side there. But you want to make sure it's flush on the back side, of course, as well. And uh, yeah, it's going this direction. Steals keep stuff from coming into the points area. It's so flush, here's flush right here, yep. So next we'll move on to the other seal. So stay tuned here. Alright, so we're working on starting to get this one going and we gotta drive it all the way in there and it gets held in with a retaining ring. Even though it's gonna be a press fit as we go in with it. Yeah we gotta find something that's the right diameter. All right, well, stay tuned here. Here we go. Come back. First. There it goes. I got him out. Yep, it did, but I just want to make sure it was square. Yeah, right. So, retaining ring. I guess once it cleans it up, yeah, it, it up. looks like this. So, and there's paint inside too. Yeah, we don't want that paint going in the in the oil passages and stuff. I wish we would have took it off first. <laughs> 
All right, well, stay tuned here. There we go. Now we're just gonna put some oil on the on the seal itself, so it it uh, doesn't get any damage when we gotta put it together. Putting some oil in there too, and so it has a fresh start of with oil ready to go. So yeah, then we're gonna put the retaining ring in. We'll be able to put the thing on the on the motor next. Anyway, it's gonna go with the fire, so stand by here. Rough, sharp edge, round edge, round edge in. Sharp edge always to the thrust side. So yeah, we kind of want this uh, this part where the pinion and the crankshaft goes into. We kind of want to fill that up with oil. So we're gonna get some more oil put in there. Yeah, there we go. And then Eiler gear. Uh, yeah. A little bit on each gear, too, as well. And put it on. So we got the gasket on here now and uh, we're ready to go ahead and put it together. We're not going to put no Yamaha Honda bond on it at all. <laughs> so slide it on there and there it goes. Then we just put the bolts and screws in here. So. Yeah, we remember to put the seal saver in there. Yeah, there's long ones and short ones. Where does the long ones go? Here. Yeah, the long ones are on the bottom, if I remember right. And then, yeah. We're kind of putting them around the outside here. Pretty ones up on top. Yeah, our nice ones up there. Nice, sir. And the original uh, finish on these screws were back in the day were Phillips. They didn't really do the Allen head stuff until 1979. 
what you've seen in what you've seen in some of my other videos about a 79 Bonneville mm -hmm. had all that stuff on it so but anyway we're working on running these in quick and then we'll talk about the torque and all that stuff so stay tuned here all right so we're going to torque these down corner inch screw it's uh 90 suggested at 96 uh, inch pounds or eight foot pounds uh, doesn't say in the book really what the spec is but uh, we're gonna have a hard time on that. yeah maybe um even just running it with an impact wrench kick it out of control but if you do one of them handheld hammer ones um a couple taps Probably should be able to lock it pretty good. It's going to jump out. So, then the problem with these uh, Phillips head screws is they don't really like to have a positive um, grip, so they can easily Alan pop out. Alan would be better. And uh, Alan would be better, and that's probably why they went to it later. So, anyway, um, we're going to work on tightening these up, so stay tuned here. All right, we're going to use the handheld one. Trade and then back where we started. There we go. Got it all in there. Well, it's kind of this segment here. Uh, next, we'll be uh, working on the transmission. Then we'll work on doing the primary on the other side, of course, and then we'll do the top end. Uh, we'll move on to putting the rear fender in and the battery box, and then so on. So, I mean, we've got some stuff coming up. So, hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's pretty exciting getting this close. So, we gotta hurry up and get this done so we can move on to other stuff. We got some other things we want to do yet. <laughs> so.